Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you how to deploy a Flask app and create a database on this service called Render. So Render is a service that you can use to host web apps, create databases, host Redis, uh, host Docker containers, and many other things that you would wanna do while hosting an app. So I wanna cover two of the most important things that you'll do with Flask, which would be hosting a Flask app itself, and then hosting a database to go along with it. So Render has a free plan, it's a little bit limited in the terms of how many things you can have at once. So you can really only have one app running at a time. But if you want to have more than one, it's pretty cheap to get started with the uh, the cheapest plan here. And something that you should know is there's a process of deploying the app that is going to be a little bit slower for free plans. But if you were to upgrade to one of the paid plans, so even the cheapest one, then it will run at a much faster pace. So just keep that in mind. You'll see what I'm talking about later in the video. And I know that deployment can be difficult for a lot of people. There are a lot of places where you can get tripped up and I'll try to cover those in this video. But if after watching this video, you feel like you still need help with this, feel free to reach out to me directly. I have a program where I can work with you one-on-one -on -one, and it's called my coaching program. So you can go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching, or you can go to the link in the description below and click on it. And then you'll learn about my coaching service. And then you can fill out a form if you want to actually talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. So let's get into this video. Uh, first, this is the dashboard that you'll see when you sign into your account after creating an account. And you see here, there are many different things that you can get started with. So static sites. So if you had like HTML and JavaScript, you can deploy it here. A web service, which is what I'm going to do in this video, which is the Flask part. Then you have other things and then you have Postgres right here. Uh, that's what I'm going to do in this video as well. Also, let me show you the code that I have set up for this. So I have a very simple Flask app. It doesn't really do anything. So here's the dunder init file, and then here's the routes.py. So basically the idea is I have some users in the database. I have one route that will show other users in the database, and I have another route that will add users to the database. So it doesn't really do much, but the point here is just to demonstrate that there is a database, and I'm going to transfer it over to Postgres in a moment. Right now I'm using SQLite, but I want to change that to Postgres. So let's get started with that first before we even deploy the app because I can work with Postgres even on my local machine. I can connect to the external Postgres server and then run everything through there. So let's go back to the dashboard and then I'll go over to PostgreSQL and hit new PostgreSQL. And I'll just give it a name. So I'll call this pretty printed render example. And then I'll just name the database the same thing. It could be a randomly generated name if you want. I'll let the user be randomly generated. For the region, I'll use Oregon uh, 15 as the version, and then I don't need Datadog. Here I have the free one, but of course, if you wanna pay for another one, you definitely can. I can't select them because I don't have a credit card on file. So I'll just hit create database here. And it seems it doesn't like my dash. So let me just go ahead and remove that and then create database. I don't mind if the actual name of the database is random. So I'll just wait for it to create. We see here it's creating and I'll just wait a moment for that to finish. Okay, so we see it's available now. So everything should be working. I can go to the upper right-hand corner here and we see there are two types of connections. So we have an internal connection and an external connection. So the internal connection is when our app is hosted on render. So we would use this URL. And then when we're connecting from outside of render, we want to use this one. So let me go ahead and copy this one and I'll place it in my code just as a comment here so you can see it. So it has my uh, username here, it has a password, uh, it has the location of the database, which is this URL here, and then it also has the name of my database. So it turns out it actually named it pretty printed render example, it just used underscores instead of dashes. Okay, so I just opened my terminal and I want to get this working. The first thing I wanna do is I want to create an environment variable to hold on to this uh, URL string here, because when I deploy it to render, it's gonna be easier to work with an actual environment variable instead of just hard coding it in my code. So I'll create that. I'm on Linux, so I'll do export, and I'll just call this database underscore URL equals, and don't even need the space, equals uh, the string that I copied. And there is one thing that I need to change. So let me do that. It can't be Postgres at the beginning here. So we see it's Postgres colon slash slash. This needs to be PostgreSQL. So put a SQL at the end, and then I can export that. So now I can import OS from Python. 
And there are multiple ways of setting up environment variables, but I'm just using this approach for this video. There's uh, no particular advantage to this one. There are other methods that are just as valid. So here I'm doing OS environ git and then the database URL. Okay. So I'll just leave that there just so I can see it. And now what I want to try is I want to open up my shell. So Flask shell. And we see it can't find my application. All I need to do is export Flask app equals my app. And then I should be able to do Flask shell. And now I get this error. So because my database URL has that PostgreSQL at the beginning, it is now going to be looking for an installed PostgreSQL library. And to do that, I can do pip install psycho pg2 dash binary. So on some systems, you don't need the dash binary, but on mine, I do. So I'll go ahead and install that. And now if I run flask run, it works. And if I do flask shell to get back where I was going, this works as well. So with this version of flask, all I have to do is do db.createAll. And assuming I get no errors, then we know the database was created properly. And we can make sure, let me open up a database tool. I'm opening dbeaver. And what I'll do in dbeaver is connect to the database that I just created on render. That way we can see the table that was created, which is just this user table. And then once I add data into the database, you'll see it there. So it's opening. and it's complaining about old connections, but that's fine. So let me go ahead and open a new connection. And here I just need to put in the information from the URL. So this is the username, the part before the colon. So username goes here. And then I have the password which is after the colon and before the at sign. So I'll put that there. The name of the database is at the very end after the slash. So that goes in database here. And then finally the host is here. So after the at sign and before the slash. And then I can test connection. It should say connected and it will be similar regardless of what database tool you use. So I'll go ahead and open this. And I'll go to databases and then the name of my database schema. It's under the public schema and then we have tables and then we have the user table, right? So we see we have ID and username here. So let me just try to add some data. So right now I'll go to data and there should be nothing in here because I just created it. So let me go back over to my app and exit out of the shell and instead start it. And to add something, I just go to my route slash add and then a name. So I'll just add myself. So localhost 5000 slash add slash Anthony. And it redirects me back to the home page and it gives me a list of all the users. So I see Anthony here. If I open up the tool again and just refresh this here, we see Anthony is here. And just to show you that it's still working, if I do add and then let's say pretty printed as a user, go back to the database, refresh we see it added pretty printed here. So the database is working. I'm able to connect to this database that I just created on render and do everything on my local machine. So that's great. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to actually deploy my app to render. So let's go back. And what this takes is first creating a repo. So what I'll do is I'll initialize this. So git init as a git repo, and then I'll create a git ignore. So I'll just put it in this directory. Uh, dot git ignore because I want to ignore the virtual environment directory. And I want to ignore the directory with the SQLite database here. And then finally, I can ignore any directory that starts with PyCache. 
Okay, just like that. So I'll save that. And now those three directories uh, turn gray because they're no longer part of the repo. Next, I want to create a requirements.txt file. So what I can do is I can say pip freeze and then requirements.txt. And the reason why I want to do this is because render is going to detect that I have a Python app. And then once it detects that I have a Python app, it's going to try to install requirements.txt. And then that's how everything is going to get going. So let me go ahead and just add everything here and commit. And once I do that, I now need to go over to GitHub and create a new repo. So we'll call this render demo and I'll make this private and I'll just create repository. And at the bottom here, since I already have a repository, I can just copy this git remote add origin, go back to the code, put it here, and then I can do git push origin master, go back, refresh, and now I see my code is here. So now I want to get this onto render. So let's go back to the render dashboard. I'll click this and I'll click new up here and I want web service. And what it's going to ask me to do is connect a repository. So render demo is the one I just created. So I'll connect that one. And then I need to give it a name. So we'll call this pretty printed flask app demo. The branch is going to be master. Of course, if you have different branches, you can change this. The root directory, you can change this if the root directory is different from like the base directory here. For me, it's uh, right here. And here we see the environment defaults as Python 3. Just make sure it's Python 3 because you don't have one of these other apps. And then we have the build command, which is pip install dash r requirements, and then the start. So we see here it's asking us for a start command, and this command is going to get our app started. So what they recommend using is G unicorn. So let me go back over to my app and I can install that with pip. So pip install G unicorn. And G unicorn is just an app server. So it's something that you can use to start your app. It's kind of like doing flask run, but G unicorn is designed to be running for long periods of time. Whereas flask run is designed just for testing purposes, right? So since I've installed something new, I can do pip freeze and then requirements.txt again. And with this method of using G unicorn, I can't use flask run like I do locally. So what I want to do is I want to create a file called run.py. So run.py. And all this is going to do is import my create app function. So from my app, import create app. And I just want to say app equals create app. And the reason why I'm doing this is because G unicorn is going to look for this app, depending on how I write the start command, and it will start uh, using this and it will get everything going. So since I've made all these changes, let me just go ahead and commit everything. And I'll push to GitHub again. So git push origin master. And now I can go back to render and I can say G unicorn. And then the name of the file, so run colon app. So it's going to look for a file called run. And then inside of that run file is going to look for an object called app. Once again, I'm picking the free one. And then there are advanced settings, but I'm just going to skip over those and create web service here. And then it's going to start the process of trying to take my code build it and then run it. And if there are any issues, we'll see them here. So like I mentioned before, if you're on the free plan, this may take a while, this is going to be slow, but if you are paying, this will be a lot faster. So I'll just wait for it to finish. Okay, so it has finally failed. We see that it says error either SQL Alchemy database URI or SQL Alchemy binds must be set. And that's because I'm using the environment variable and I haven't set it up yet. So what I want to do is I want to go over to the dashboard again, and I'll go to my database. And this is where I'm going to use the internal connection. So I'll copy the URL here, and then I'll go back to my app. So back to the dashboard and then click on app. And then on the left-hand side here, we see environment. And I want to add an environment variable. The key is going to be database URL, just like I created it locally. And then I'll just paste everything in here. Remember, I have to change this from Postgres to PostgreSQL. So I'll put the Q and the L on the end. And then once I do that, I can just save.
and then I can go to events here. And now that I've saved the environment, it's going to start the deploy process again. So I'll just sit here and wait until it finishes. Okay, so now it says deploy live. And what I can do is I can click on that and we'll see the log here. And we see that it's listening on port 10,000. Here I have a link to the app, so I'll just click on it. It will open up in a new tab. And we see Anthony and Pretty Printed here. And I can do the same thing. I can do add and then let's say another one. Let's call this user Python. I'll just add Python to the database and we'll add one more uh, flask. And if I go back and bring up my database viewer, I can refresh and I see Python and Flask are there. So we see my app is running, it has been deployed. I can give this URL to someone and they can use my app. And by the way, if you have a domain and you wanna use a domain name with this, uh, there is some setting here, right here, custom domains. You just have to follow the instructions here. I don't have a domain available to demonstrate this, but the instructions are pretty straightforward on getting custom domains set up. So if that's what you want for your app, you can definitely do that. So that's all the stuff that I want to cover in this video, basically deploying a Flask app with Postgres to render. If you have any questions about anything I've done here, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.